wood is that when using water-based finishes, it raises the grain now, of the minute, wood. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Raising the grain, what does that even mean? A common slang term that is thrown around woodworking is raising the grain. Today we're going to talk about what it means, what causes it, and how to prevent it. Raising the grain isn't actually a new term. I found references back to the 19th century talking about this. I even found a Supreme Court case from 1897 talking about raising the grain. Our forefathers knew about raising the grain, but what does it mean? To put it simply, raising the grain means to raise fibers that you normally wouldn't see off the surface of the wood, causing the surface to feel rough. This is an issue as one of the fundamental things that we try to leave behind is a nice, smooth, clean surface. Any rough or fuzzy surface that we leave behind makes our work look unprofessional and unfinished. So what causes it? In a word, water. But let's step back a little bit and look at the material that we cut and use. The lumber that we use was at one point alive. Each section of lumber was comprised of dense fibers that brought the water from the base of the tree up to the branches above. When trees are cut down and processed, part of the process is removing the water. After the water has been removed, each of the fibers are now like tiny sponges, ready to absorb water in any way that they can. This makes dry lumber hygroscopic and able to pull moisture from the air, which is why wood is in a constant state of movement where it releases and absorbs water from the air. When we cut lumber, no matter how sharp our tools are, be it the teeth on a blade, to a plain iron, we are severing those fibers into smaller segments. Most of the time those fibers lay flat against the wood or they're so tiny that we have a difficult time seeing or feeling them. But when we add water to the surface, each of those fibers are now full of water. Instead of thinking of the fibers as being 90 degrees from the surface, it's more accurate to think of them as swollen, large and in charge. I set up a little test with actual grain to prove this point. I have two measuring glasses here that I'll add a tablespoon of rice to. I'll add water to the right side and polyurethane to the left. I've sped up 18 minutes of movement into a five second time loop to show you how easily rice absorbs the water and how the polyurethane doesn't. Now some of you I'm sure have gotten ahead of me now and know what I'm going to say. But this is why when we add water to the wood that we get this strange phenomenon known as raising the grain. Dry lumber can't help but suck in the water. That's what the fibers were made to do. But oils and polyurethanes on the other hand have very little effect on the fibers. Our forefathers knew about this and while there were some attempts to control this, they generally didn't worry about this because their finishes contained oil or resin, which not only didn't cause the fibers to swell up like sponges, but also helped to lay the fibers flat on the surface. In the Supreme Court case that I found, a witness talked about the grain being raised and because it had not yet been finished. This was a really important find for me as it demonstrated people really didn't worry about raising the grain unless the wood got wet before they were able to finish it. It wasn't until they started adding water stains that they noticed and tried to do something about this problem. That leaves us with, how do we prevent this? My favorite solution was by a manufacturer that recommended that you always buy the best cutting tools and the sharpest blades. This was a fantastic market strategy cooked up by some bean counter but it's not completely accurate. While yes, you want to have the sharpest blades that you can, having the sharpest blades doesn't prevent this problem, nor does having the most expensive machine. If you're thinking to yourself, just use sandpaper, you are partially correct. First of all, you can sand too much. The goal with sanding is to take the fibers and fragment them into even smaller, thinner fibers. You'll start with a lower coarse grit and work your way up to a higher grit. Now, if you do too much, you'll break the fibers that weren't on the surface and cause you to have to restart the entire cycle over again. You also wanna make sure that you don't go from a coarse sandpaper to a really fine sandpaper as those larger fibers will be more difficult to shear off. Of course, there's another option. Don't use water in stains or finishes. Due to water-based finishes having water, you'll cause those grains to become fat and plump. Using oils and resins like our forefathers did will solve that problem or help to solve that problem. There are a lot of advantages to using water-based products as well as beautiful dyes and stains that can be added to water. I wouldn't want to have to limit myself to oils and resin. I'd like to thank Bob from Bob's Wood Stuff for allowing me to sample his video. You'll find that video in the link down below. Go check it out. I'd also like to thank my wonderful patrons for keeping this going and invite you to become a patron today. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy Qart, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot. 
hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob. And remember to keep making things.